Yeah, I must start actually in 2004. That's when we started the new fund. Uh, when we started the new fund, the, uh, our accounts were 540 million in deficit. And at that time, the strategy was really to turn around the fortunes of the fund. Uh, a lot of efficiencies were brought in. Uh, we had to get the right management team. So basically, we, all, we started the new fund with only five of the old employees. And in terms of financial recovery, we were doing very well until in uh, 2008, when we recorded 141 million deficit. That's a reduction from 540 million. However, we are all aware of the Belgian claim uh, that was related to the Harry Simon uh, crash. And that year, the courts uh, basically um, found the Harry Simon guilty. That, that meant that the fund had to pay the Belgian tourists it was about 250 million to be paid over 21 years. And then from that year on in 2009, we found ourselves again in with a 458 million deficit. Uh, it hasn't been easy. Immediately with that deficit, we saw that uh, we need a financial turnaround strategy. Within the same uh, strategy that we had for that uh, period, we had to come up with um, initiatives to reduce that deficit because the sustainability of the fund eventually depended on that. And we termed that financial turnaround strategy the quantum leap strategy, which we said that by 2017, the MVA fund must rid itself of um, that, of the deficit. And it has been rocky, but I must say that over the past three years, we've seen a lot of improvement and we are really happy with the results. We can safely say that we are looking at actually um, achieving a 100% solvency by March next year, which is 2016. Would you not agree that to say that you'll be solvent by 2017 is a bit of an ambitious target? Not even 2017, but 2016. And what is the level of solvency as we speak? At the moment, our solvency is at 86%. So we really don't think it's over ambitious. Had you asked me that question about five years ago, it would have been something else. Because at some point for uh, our funding level, for every dollar that we owed, we only had three dollars to pay in terms of claims. But with the efficiencies that we brought into place, um, we really control our operational costs. We are very much involved in controlling our medical costs because as crashes are going up, we are really feeling the pinch in our medical costs. But we have hospital case managers who ensure that um, patients don't overstay in hospitals. Patients are treated in uh, relevant facilities. There are sometimes some of the patients would have scratches and they'd want to be treated in private facilities. Mm -hmm. And we say, but this treatment is available in, in state facilities. Because we are really involved in that, we are able to control our costs. And then with the emphasis on our investments, the, the little that we have, we invest it so that we can also grow our investments. You will see that our assets have improved over the past uh, few years. And the results are speaking for themselves. I mean, look at our sol solvency level. As at end of March, we're standing at 86%. Those are audited results. We are now in September. We closed August with 91%. So we really think uh, 2016, uh, it's something doable by March 2016. However, we, we're really not complacent. We are doing everything to ensure that, that we are solvent. But it's not really to boast a healthy um, financial state of affairs. It's really to ensure that the fund meets the client's needs and that it's a long-term fund. It must really respond to the mandate, not something that helps clients today and tomorrow. It's no longer there because it does not have the right finances or the, um, the right funding formula, the right funding model. Uh, if you look at our, the recommendation by our actuaries, they say that for the fund that we are running, looking at the accidents, looking at the rate at which we are settling claims, we need at least 53 cents um, to, to sustain the fund. We currently at 47.7 cents. 
And we are saying with this 47.7 cents, we have to make the best out of it. Yes, we are looking at additional sources of funding. Uh, once those are sorted out, we'll really share with the public. Um, it has to go through legislative amendments and a lot, but really where we're standing now, we're very comfortable and we're looking forward to what the future holds. Could you give us a bit of insight into the new 2014-2019 strategy? Yes, I must say that I was appointed in 2015 and it so happened that it coincided with the end of the previous strategy and one of the tasks that the board gave me was to come up with a five-year strategy which is the one that you're referring to 2014 to 2019. Uh, this strategy is premised on four pillars. Uh, we're looking at uh, service performance, which we measure through our customer satisfaction and also our stakeholder satisfaction. There are also targets that we set on an annual basis, 85%. And then we also look at staff satisfaction. Yes, it's all about the customer, but if the staff are not happy, they won't, won't deliver the product or the service that you want to give to the customer. And then the third one is effective internal processes. Uh, MVA fund is made up of six business units and we also want to measure how this, how effective these business units are performing. We are a highly performance driven organization and on a quarterly basis out of five none of the business units should perform less than 3.5, that's the target that we have. And then the last one which is, I think it will be obvious for everybody, is financial performance. Without the finances we are not able to provide the services that we were created for. Our mandate is really to support persons who are injured in road crashes and we really need to ensure that financial sustainability is there for the fund to stay long for years to come. So basically those are the four pillars of the 2014-2019 um, uh, strategy. However, I must say that we place a high focus on rehabilitation. In the past years, we've had various strategies. We did well, we improved service, we have the right team. We tried to change the historical sort of woes that we've had. But there's one thing that we didn't do so well. It's really rehabilitating our customers. There's now accessibility. People can access our offices from about seven areas throughout the country. There's also NAMPO services, they can lodge their claims. We pay funeral claims in 30 minutes. We've reduced, people would wait for two years for their claims. Now within days, we actually set ourselves 30 days uh, to pay claims. It's remarkable, but there was one thing missing. We need to rehabilitate people. The injured people, some of them were working. We need to return them to work. They are school-going children. We need to return them to school. And they are just those that we need to, independ them, uh, to, to return them to independence as close as possible to um, a situation that's closer to where they were before the, the crash. And that's the focus. So last year we started with a pilot. We went around the world. Where we benchmark ourselves with the rest of the world. We don't limit ourselves to Africa. In actual fact, the processes that we have here at the MBA Fund of Namibia we learn from New Zealand, we learn from Australia, Tasmania. We go all over the world because we want to peg ourselves with the best. And uh, after a trip from um, Australia and New Zealand, we said, let's pilot this. Let's try to put on a program where we return people to work. We started piloting last year. So far, 389 people have gone through this program and they have achieved their rehabilitation goals. It's really remarkable for us because not only are we taking people through the hospital, once they get out of the hospital, we say, okay, take care of yourself. No, we speak to employers to reintegrate them back to work. And that's really one of the biggest focus, focuses of, the, of the, the new strategy.